Beyond the Mic with Sean Dillon. We're joined on the star line by an actress, singer, cellist, and writer immersed in music throughout her life. Her latest role is Violet in Chicago Fire on NBC. We welcome Hanako Greensmith. Hey, Sean, how are you? Absolutely great. Hanako, let's go beyond the mic. You're the daughter of two classical musicians. How has your parents' love of music developed your love for the arts? Uh, I was just pretty much always surrounded by classical music growing up. And so I, you know, I dabbled in cello and then I did singing and then singing led to musical theater. And then musical theater really just brought my love of acting to the forefront. And so since then, I've just followed that passion and it's gotten me to where I've gotten today. I'm thankful to say. Violet is a deep, passionate woman who knows what she wants, isn't afraid to speak her mind at any time and can kill a man with just one look. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, repeat your question. I was busy laughing. Well, she could. How do, how do you relate to her? Oh, man. I mean, I kind of admire her. I wish I had just a little bit more of her confidence in my life. I can't say like 99% of the things that she says to people on a day-to-day basis. Um, but I, I, I have to say that there's there also is something I think that we're going to see of her this season where she's a bit more vulnerable and you're going to see her in a more a difficult situation, as we know, with having to sacrifice a lot of what she has prioritized for herself for the sake of someone else, too. Um, and that's going to bring about something that I think I feel a little closer to in my own life. How have you sacrificed in your relationships for others? Well, uh, I, <laughs> this one's silly, but honestly, move. Moving to Chicago was incredible, but it was really hard because I had to say kind of goodbye to a lot of the relationships I had with people in New York. I'm not accessible in the way that I once was. My relationships had to change and that I had to prioritize communication in a big new way. And that's a challenge in itself when you're working so many hours a day. You were first recurring on season eight, now a season regular in season 10. What do you have to say to this passionate Chicago Fire fan base? Oh, man. Well, thank you, of course. Not just for my arc, but for getting us to season 10. That's incredible. Um, and also, I thank them, too, for because I, I know that they had to take take on Violet in a very unique way and that she kind of came in in a last-minute sort of way and, and everything kind of had to fall into its place in a rather quick quick amount of time. And so uh, I appreciate that they've taken to her so much and that they've been so supportive. I love receiving fan mail and all of these messages. It's it's really, really sweet to know that what we're creating here in Chicago is translating via screen. From Chicago Fire on NBC, Hanako Greensmith joins us beyond the mic, and it's time for the Rocking Eight. Eight random questions. Answer with the first thing that comes to your mind. There is no pressure. Okay. <laughs> Hanako, what is your favorite piece to play on the cello? Ooh, I like to play the swan. Where's the best place to think on the Pace University campus? Best place to think would probably be a practice room on the fifth floor. <laughs> Living in New York, you've seen plenty of shows. What's your favorite Broadway show? Ooh, I guess the one that I've seen on Broadway, I saw the revival of Cabaret and God, I don't know what year that probably was like 20 before 2014 must have been 2012 or 2013. You and your parents have such an incredible relationship. After getting a piercing, after a fun night, your dad asked if you got a <laughs> tattoo. What would be your first tattoo? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, I would probably want to get something related to my mom's side of the family, but my mom's side of the family is incredibly anti-tattoo. So I feel like it'd be pretty ironic if I did that for them. <laughs> Do you like sunrise or sunsets? I like sunsets. Time to put you to the test. Who's the favorite of all your Chicago fire castmates? I I can't answer that. It's like choosing which is your favorite pet. You know what I mean? Come on. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. Okay, one of my favorite people, one of my favorite people who makes me laugh all the time because he's one of the wittiest people I've ever met is Christian Stolte, who plays Mouch. Kind of figured you'd say that. Yeah. If you weren't an actor, what career would you want? Ooh, I don't, oh, someone asked me this the other day. Um, I think, I think I would probably like to work in, as a, a producer of some sort, work in the creative field, but have a little bit more of a say in the creation that's being created, maybe. One of your past characters, Bonnie, said, quote, I like yummy food, hard liquor, and men who are willing to pay for both, unquote. Yes. What's your favorite meal and drink? Oh, I was just telling someone I find it impossible to choose my favorite food. I pretty much love everything. So what's your comfort food? I mean, what makes you feel better after a hard day? Oh, man, this is kind of grandma of me. I love soup. 
I will have soup any time of day, anywhere, any kind of soup. So I would say if I'm having a bad day, I want to, I want to have a really hot, really good soup. And then my comfort drink is definitely a glass of wine. <laughs> you like red, white, Pinot? Red. It's got a, I like Pinot. I, I make it red. <laughs> Monica, how did you spend the pandemic with not a lot of gigs available, acting and theater shut down? How did you change as a person during the quarantine Ooh, that's a good question. I really had to settle with um, my honestly, my self worth, because I felt like so much of what I defined myself as a person wasn't there anymore. I didn't really have the acting industry available to me. We weren't working. And so in that time, I had to prioritize my mental health. And I also, for the first time ever, really got to be in nature. And that sounds so silly when I put it that way, but going on like a hike every day, being with my dogs, being able to experience the world and its natural elements really, really grounded me in a way that I'm actually very, very grateful for now looking back on. It's time for one big question with Hanako Greensmith beyond the mic. Your late grandfather was unable to watch you portray Violet on Chicago Fire, but he said, quote, I am waiting yeah. for your coming, unquote. What would he think of Violet and your successes? Oh, my grandpa. Uh, I think, honestly, I don't think he'd care, which is the best part. <laughs> he didn't really, you know, like he wasn't a guy who was like looking forward to like my accomplishments. He really just loved me for the person that I was. And so that's what I think I miss most about him. <laughs> How has your family embraced your acting successes? Or is it, oh, there's Hanako going to do her acting thing? <laughs> um, I will say that I've definitely enjoyed seeing my dad geek out a bit. He definitely gets excited when he sees my face on a TV screen. Um, but my mom, similar to my grandpa, has been very much like, yeah, I mean, this is this is what you wanted, right? This was the goal. So that's, that's good. <laughs> she wants Ron Swanson's laugh as a ringtone, loves seeing sunsets, and wants you to watch Chicago Fire on NBC. We thank Hanako Greensmith for taking the time to talk with us today. Oh, thanks so much, Sean. It was lovely chatting with you. Truly. Thank you. And that, my friends, is a Beyond the Mic Shortcut. Mm-hmm.